Hello everyone, it is I Tabo and welcome to another tutorial on 3JS. Okay, today I'm going to be teaching you how to create this tunnel with this fireball that is moving through it. And without further ado, we're just going to jump right in. Okay, well as usual, uh, I already have our base code. So we're going to be importing our library, our orbit control, unreal bloom pass, render pass, shader pass, effect composer and pointer lock controls so right here we've got our renderer as usual and the only difference here uh, in comparison to other tutorials is that i've already set up our shadow map so we're going to say renderer uh, shadow map enabled equals to true and renderer shadow map type is going to be 3.pc soft shadow map which is already the default and we're going to create our camera our scene we're going to give it a black background and we're going to implement our orbit control well in this particular scene we we don't really need the orbit control but i always put it just in case i might want to use it for whatever reason and then we've got our own window resize this is basically to manage our window when we resize it so that it re-renders our scene we've got our render function auto clear equals to false so render dot clear we set our pixel aspect ratio and then we render our scene then we've got an animate function here which calls our render function and then we call the request animation frame so once again before i start i just want to make sure that i mentioned that this is not a newbie tutorial so most of the concepts here i assume that you already know how to set up a basic scene i assume that you already know how post-processing effects work if you don't then there's a link in the description to the relevant tutorials okay so underneath here this is where i'm going to start uh, putting our code so we're first going to start with creating our controls we're going to be using a point to lock control and this is what's going to help us to connect the camera to our curve and this will be using the point to lock control system for okay then we're going to create a point light and we're going to give it this following color over here and then we're going to turn the intensity to two so we first create a point light one so we're going to make the distance 16.5 we're going to turn cast shadow to true and then we're going to make shadow bias minus 0 0.005 and then the shadow map size will be 1024 well you can adjust this accordingly but if you want a finer shadow map then you have to then uh, increase the size of the resolution so 20 1024 is what we're going to go with and then we're just going to adjust the camera near 0 0.1 and the camera far to a thousand and then next i'm going to create another light it's another point light i will give it the same color but this time the intensity will be 0 0.8 and then following that we're going to create a render pass so we're going to say new render pass then we're going to pass it the scene and our camera and then we're going to create a effect composer and then we're going to pass it the renderer then we create a bloom pass using the unreal bloom pass we're going to give it the following values this is the resolution and uh yes you're going to give it these values over here and then next we're going to create a three cat rom curve three so this is what we're going to use you have different options for the types of curves that you can create but we're going to use cat rom curve three and we're going to then give it these following values so here we are plotting out where we want it to be in the 3d space so we're basically giving it shape okay so we're just going to use four points for this particular example and then afterwards then we're going to make the curve type to sentry pedal and then we're going to close it by saying curve.closed equals to true and then next in line is we're going to create a tube geometry so we're going to pass it the path which is the curve that we created over here and then we're going to give it these other values this is our radius and this is the radial segment and tubular segments and then next we create a tube material we're going to use a mesh standard material we're going to give it the following color well the wireframe is going to be false we're going to make it double-sided make transparent false uh, opacity one you don't really have to do any of this if you're not going to be changing this around but this is how it looks because i wanted to have the option of turning it on and off for different reasons then next we're going to create a point material we're going to give it the following color and this is going to be the size of our points and then next we create a wireframe mat this is basically just another material but we're going to be using this material for our mesh because we're going to have a wireframe so what we want to do is that we want to have another mesh which is just mainly going to be a wireframe so that we can be able to change the color of it accordingly because if we don't then we just use this one over here then we can't really change the color without changing the color of the entire 
thing. And anyway, we have both the, the shaded part and the wireframe. Okay, so that's what that does. So then yeah, we have our wireframe mesh, which is just another mesh, but using this wireframe material. Then we create a tube mesh, or another mesh, but we're gonna be using our tube geometry. So this is the actual tunnel. Then we create another one. So this is another tunnel, but it's mainly gonna be using the points. So then we're gonna assign it the tube geometry and we're gonna use the point mat, which is this one over here. We're gonna make them both receive shadows. So we're gonna say, receive shadows equals to true and then next we're gonna load our map so we're gonna use the three dot texture loader and this is where we're gonna get our map so i created this alpha test uh, jpeg um this will be included so you will then have it also or you can create your own you can basically play around with different textures so that you can get different effects for your alpha and then i create a sphere geometry oh yeah um and once again uh, i just want to make sure that these values over here i just went back to our wireframe material i just want to make sure that you can see this because because uh, i've zoomed in to the id so that the text can be visible or big enough so i just want to make sure that you can uh, read this because sometimes i've noticed that i've forgotten to make sure that you can see everything so anyway the next thing is uh then over here i just created an if statement and then i just say if map so we're basically gonna then do this only when the map has loaded otherwise we will get an error there are different ways to go about it but this is just the way that i did it so then we create the um, uh, mesh standard material which is what we're going to use for our sphere and then we create the mesh then using the sphere geometry over here and then we create the sphere mat and then afterwards we make sure that it can also cast shadows by saying cast shadow equals to true then we add it to our scene. over here we add our tube mesh as well and then next we're going to create our clock this is what we're going to be using for the animation later on. And then over here, we can already use our composer. So since we're going to be using the bloom effect, so we created a composer, we add our render pass to it, and then we add our bloom pass to it. Okay, then next we're going to add our light. We're going to add light too. Well, if you didn't already pick that up, I already set up the orbit control. So this is just simple. We just assign the camera and the render element to our orbit control and then we update it and then we just say when there is a change then re-render it's as simple as that okay so just before we get to our render function um i just created another variable here called time so this is what i'm going to be using to animate our alpha it's not really obvious like it's a small animation but it does make a difference because when it's not there you would also notice it kind of enhances the glowing effect or the stripes that you see on on the fireball anyway um i will try to demonstrate what that actually does okay so then after creating it then inside of our render function then i'm gonna then increment it by 0 0.01 and then over here i'm just gonna create a couple of these another time variable uh that this is gonna be using the clock dot get elapsed time and we're gonna then create a loop time which will be equal to 50 and then we're gonna say t equals to time and then we're gonna take the modulus of time and loop time we're gonna divide that by loop time again now this is something that i got from the example so what this actually does is to just keep it from exceeding one it just kind of keeps incrementing but uh, it never reaches one as soon as it's about to hit one then it goes back to zero so this is what maintains the animation otherwise it would get stuck and you'll just get a black screen and the animation wouldn't carry on anymore like this wouldn't let this part over here just wouldn't work because of that so at first i didn't understand why they did it like this but when i tested it then i understood so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna just say t, t equals the time the modulus thereof is divided by loop time and we're gonna pretty much do the same thing here but the difference is that here we're gonna add one to our time and then we create another one t3 and there we're gonna add 0 0.7 to it and then here we're gonna create three different variables pause pause 2 and pause 3 and these are going to be using these different time all right so then what i'm going to do is i'm going to animate the second light and so we're going to take the position thereof we're going to copy it and we're going to be using this value in particular this will influence um, the distance basically so that it lights it from behind and then we're going to take our camera dot look at so in order for the camera to keep looking forward we're using our look at so the camera will be looking at the 
points of the curve so whatever point is in front of it that's where it's going to be looking and then we're going to get our camera we're basically going to say that we want our camera to also move along the curve so this is to make the camera move along the curve and this is to make camera face the forward position as it moves along the curve and so next we're just going to check if our sphere mesh is not undefined only when it is not undefined then we're going to also give it these positions we're going to use position 2 so it's basically doing the same thing that we did over here just to our sphere mesh and we're also going to animate the rotation x and z because we want the light to follow the mesh so then we're going to parent our point light uh, to our sphere so it's going to be lighting it inside okay so that yellow glow that you also see it's also because of the light which is inside the sphere so it's just lighting the inner surface and then next we're gonna go to our alpha test and then we're gonna use math operations to animate it math.sign we're gonna use time and we're gonna times it by 0 0.04 plus 0 0.7 so this will just make it move just right behind our sphere that's all that is gonna do and this value will just also make sure that it's almost in sync with this one because we can't use our points and yeah once all of that is done then we can already start playing our animation so what i'm gonna do now is just run our server and then my bad i forgot to sort this out i just need to change the address for this so there we go um so this is our tunnel animation and just to illustrate what I meant with the different animations and the different glows that I was mentioning. So this is 0 0.7. Let's say if I make it 0 0.6 or maybe let's say 0 0.8. See, that's the difference there. So this makes a whole lot of difference. And also with our point light, let's say I will increase the intensity of our of light too. So let's just make it, okay, I'm just going to blow it out just for illustration's sake. So this is what you will get if you do that. So you can play around and uh, see what suits you best. I just did what I did and I like the one that I had, even though um, I have a different screen. So on the other monitor, it looks a bit different. These are the different looks that you can get if you just do a bit of adjusting to the values. But I will stick to what I did. Okay, so some of the things that I wanted to illustrate, I think was the alpha test. I wanted to show you what that actually does. So over here, I'm just going to change this value. For instance, I want you to pay attention to how it looks now and what it's going to look like after I make the change. So now you can see how the alpha is being animated. So this is another way that one could do this. Let's try this value. Okay, so this is also another look and feel and you can see that it also influences the shadow map. The lower we go, then the less of these lines that we see. Basically, what we're seeing is the inside of the sphere. Okay, so through the transparency, then we can see the inside of the sphere, which kind of gives it a glow effect. Okay, so now I'm just going to revert back to the original value. And one other thing that I must definitely not forget is over here to use our bloom effect, because this is what actually makes it look cool. Okay, so, uh, sorry, composer.render. I almost forgot this. All right, so you can see now with our bloom effect, then we've got a really cool glow there. And then we can do this experiment once again, just to see how it looks now with the effect composer. So you can play around with this, you know, and uh, get uh, different looks and feel. Another thing that we can also illustrate is the points. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shut off one of the meshes, the point mesh, and uh, we're gonna see then what did that actually does. So I'm just gonna do it this way. As you can see, this is what it looks like without the points. Well, you can choose whether you think this looks better or not, but either way, you have many options. Well, the other one would be to increase the size of the points. So if I increase the size to five, this is what it would look like. So yeah, you choose what you like. Um, 
I tried to go for a more subtle look, but this could also work. But anyway, so this is overall what the lesson is all about. And uh, I'm just going to stop it here. I think I've done everything that I promised to do. And yeah, the rest is up to you. So I just want to make sure that I remind you to please hit that like button. I hit the notification bell to be notified whenever there's a tutorial coming and hit that subscribe button button because if you've gone this far then clearly you must like what i do so yeah support your brother and with all that said love and peace i'm out